Hi everybody, I'm Sunny and you're watching Sunny Preps. Thanks for joining me. I'm really excited because I finally got to process all the tomatoes from my garden that have been in my freezer all winter long and that turned out well. However, I had a major fail with my canning. So let's start from the beginning. I took these tomatoes out hours ago and they are still frozen solid. I don't know if you can tell, those are ice crystals, that's solid ice right there. And then of course, these ginormous, don't pay attention to that lazy Susan, it's broken. These ginormous containers are still frozen solid. There's another one over here, frozen solid. So I'm thawing them out one bag at a time, peeling them as much as I can because it's so easy to do when they thaw out. Putting them in the blender. Now I have, I do have a big blender, but because you know I don't cook very much. When I moved here, I knew I wasn't going to stay here very long, so I just never bothered unpacking it, and I'm not going to bother unpacking it now. But Erin, um, Erin Scott, she has a channel. Uh, she does a lot of canning, and she uh, told me that when I was ready to, after the last time I made tomato sauce. At, um, in an emergency situation because the freezer had a little failure. She told me to contact her when I was ready to do the big batch and she recommended blending the tomatoes before you put them in to start boiling so or to start cooking. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm blending them up in here and it's actually going pretty well because then here is my food mill that I bought uh, that I didn't have last time. And I just, well, I can't do that and hold the camera and I don't have my thing, my tripod. All right, so you turn that around and it pushes out down here and it's all great and good and everything. But I don't know if you can tell, this is like tomato slushy because the tomatoes are still half frozen. So it's making it a little extra fun. I'm doing that into this uh big pot and then I'm putting it into here um, to accumulate more and I'm probably going to have to find a few more big pots because this probably isn't going to be enough but I haven't even started cooking yet it's still everything's cold um, and that's why this cord going across the stove doesn't matter <laughs> well I was up bright and early this morning finishing <laughs> Uh, peeling, uh, blending, and straining the tomatoes. So this pot is very full. And this pot is pretty full. It's already cooked down a bit. It's going to be tomato soup. It's starting to smell good, but I need to go get some celery. Um, there's, these are just some of the seeds. I actually threw some away. I saved a bunch of them. And uh, they're mixed brandywine and Amish paste and maybe even a little triple L uh, climbing something, whatever it's called. So I'm not going to save all of them because I didn't separate them, but I am saving some just for an emergency. My kitchen is a disaster, so please don't look. This is the pot that is waiting to go in here when it starts to cook down a little bit. And... Over here on this counter, I have my crock pot that is slowly simmering away. Random other things that you find in my kitchen. This was actually um, back by the basement stairs, but I couldn't take care of it until I had the sink cleared out. But after I started thawing tomatoes yesterday, I went and painted the ceiling in a rental property. And... I needed to wash this, but I didn't get to it, and now it's dry. It will still come out, though, because it's latex. This is a fantastically huge paint tray, and I actually loved it. Um, I poured an entire, at least a gallon of paint, maybe more, that I had left in the bottom of my big uh, five-gallon can of paint, and did not have to refill once, still had some left over. Well, now we're on day three of this tomato process. I remember why 
I last time I did this or the very first time I ever did this years and years ago I decided it was way easier to buy tomato sauce in a can for 99 cents and doctored it up myself but that doesn't help with the interruptions in the supply chain and the quality of the food and the getting rid of all the stuff that could be in our food that shouldn't be in our food but it's worth it now that I'm not raising a couple toddlers or working full time or chasing after teenagers. So now that I am more aware of all the things that could be wrong with our food and our supply chain, it's worth it for me to learn how to do this. So I've got the crock pot going over here and I've got two pots on the stove. This one is the tomato soup which is really ready to go in the jars and this one is going to be paste and I'm going to put the contents of the slow cooker in here combine them and keep boiling them down and I saw one video of how they do it in Italy they actually when it gets really really thick then they put it on a board outside and sort of tip the board and let all the extra juice run off and then let it bake in the sun I don't think I'm going to do that. For one thing, it's not really very warm outside. Recipes I saw online were to put it in the oven and let it help dry out that way. Over here, these jars came out of a house that I bought for rental property. And there was a very old woman that was going to live with her kids. And they just left some of her stuff there that she wasn't going to be using. This jar... If you, you can see the B really well in that position. Um, this is at least 60 years old, and it could be up to 87 years old. This one I think might be old too, but I can't find anything definitive um, about that. This one is interesting. It's Presto Wide Mouth Glass Top, and then it says Dura Glass. I don't have a glass top to go with it. It says who it was manufactured by. But I can't figure out how old that one is either. They're all just clear. There's a couple of these that are completely unmarked. They look like mayonnaise jars except that they have the, they have the screw top appropriate for the canning rims. So they'll work just fine. Now I have tons of jars. Some I've already used and some are still out in the garage and I think it was quite a haul. The lady left her, well, the kids that came and packed up her stuff also left a stack of her recipes, um, her recipe books and all the handwritten notes and everything. I'm going to try to contact the family to see if they want that back because if that was my grandmother's, I would want it. So there's still quite a ways to go in here to get the paste that I want and I definitely want to make it paste because you can take the paste and make anything you want. You can you know, add water and make spaghetti sauce. You can uh, make it into ketchup. You can make it into pizza sauce or put it in a lasagna, whatever you want. So I want to make paste. Besides that, it takes up less room to store and it's lighter if you need to move it or to bug out or to just move, which I'll be doing eventually, but probably not before all this paste gets eaten. In the meantime, it's really nice that this doesn't require too much babysitting. It does make my kitchen windows all foggy and drippy, which probably isn't good for them. But I need to head out to the garage and fix a drawer that came out of one of my rental properties that is broken. So I'm going to fix that and show you what else I've been up to. Here's some more of my mason jar haul. Here's one that's just called Easy Pack Mason. There's no other identifier on it. I have no idea what that is. Here's a small Presto Supreme Mason. It's kind of square. I like those. This one just says Mason up the side. And it's got graduation marks. Here's another Atlas Mason. I 
think this one's actually older. I'll check it out. And there's more in here. And it says mason jar. And a bigger Atlas Mason. I'll check them out. But we're out here in the garage because I need to work on this. So this drawer came out of the kitchen of one of my rentals and I need to work on it and it looks like the problem is this particle board which is just awful. So I'm going to at least replace this with plywood. Uh, the sides here look like they need to be replaced with plywood. The problem is I, I have a router but I don't know if I have the right um, whatever this is called, <laughs> bit, uh, to make this. And I've never used my router. It was bought for a purpose that never got used. So I'm just going to try to piece this one together. You can see this even came off because it, that big chunk came out. It's going pretty good. I've got a replacement for this piece that's falling apart made out of good solid plywood and I'm just going to screw it into the drawer face to help with the situation I'm going to use a bunch of wood glue in here and then I'm actually going to drill holes in different spots and screw it in from different places there's not much left to work with here Okay, as I've been manipulating it, the bottom's coming loose a little bit from the sides, and I know that'll be taken care of when I do the front, but since I've got the wood glue and I've got the clamps, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, the bottom's glued. Took a little convincing to get this giant cap to put glue in that tiny little crack, but I did it. Now we're going to put glue in here and here and I will put it along the, the cover part here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place and let it dry and see if it's gonna hold. There are some screws to put in here and um, I'll put some new screws in here. If that doesn't seem like it's gonna work, I've got some angle braces I can put inside. This is already laying on the floor by the time I found it and I'm starting to think that it should be flipped the other way but even if it does need to be flipped the other way that's just a matter of changing the, taking the screws out turning it and putting it on so so I'm going to go ahead and put some screws in place okay that's holding the hardware onto the plywood which is of course also pinches the side of the drawer One more screw on this side. That sucked in there real good. Went ahead and took that off. So it doesn't get glued in place just in case I have it wrong now that I think about it I'm pretty sure I did have it wrong because it was the top here that was really filthy and I had to clean and that would have been from grabbing it and holding on to the drawer even with like 200 screws it's still hard to find the right one <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put a couple screws in the bottom, holding it onto the base plate. Okay, that's going to dry overnight. It's time for me to go check on my tomato sauce and get inside where it's warm. There's the soup starting to smell really wonderful in the kitchen and here's everything else I put the screen on to stop splattering but it's still splattered in the middle you can 
see it's still splattering some over here. Uh, but I wanted to let steam out. Here it is. It's getting nice and thick. All those tomatoes, I'm going to come up with that much soup and how much paste. Well, it took forever, but finally the tomato soup and the tomato paste are done. Now the tomato paste turned out kind of dark and I'm sure that means I overcooked it, but it has sort of a roasted tomato flavor, so it's actually really delicious. Um, that turned out well and all of the cans that I, that I had in my canner with the tomato soup and the tomato paste sealed just fine. However, I also had jars of barbecue shredded pork in there and none of them sealed. I think they may have been overfilled. Uh, these both lost a lot. This one actually was out in the water, canning water, and just made a mess. It's disgusting. Uh, I also used sugar-free barbecue sauce, and I'm wondering if that had anything to do with it. I don't know does anybody else, has anybody else ever canned with sugar-free? Please let me know. I don't know how that reacts under pressure, if it creates too much gas or something, as opposed to the sugar, because it's a it's sugar alcohol that was used. I'm not sure what might have happened. So the question is, do I need to just throw these out? They've been in the fridge since I got them out of the canner. Um, they're, they cool down completely before I got them out, but I went ahead and put them in the fridge because they're obviously not canned. Do I need to throw these out? Can I go ahead and eat them before, you know, just leave them in the fridge and eat them quickly? Or feed them to the dog? Or can I try canning it again? So that's my big question for you guys. So, if you have any ideas of what happened, please leave comments below and let me know what happened and what I should do. I, I, I kind of feel like maybe it had something to do with the artificial sweetener, uh, but I don't know. When I started my channel, I said that I would be showing all my successes and my fails and my experiments and my attempts at doing things because I am here to learn probably more than to teach, at least with the homesteading stuff. So. Please let me know <laughs> whether I can eat this, whether I need to throw it out, whether I can feed it to the dogs, or whether I can try to can it again. I have to run the canner again soon anyway because I have more tomato paste that didn't fit in the canner that needs to be canned. So if I can can it again, I'm up for it. Succeed or fail, keep trying, keep preparing, and keep smiling because a rainy day is no match for a sunny disposition. See you later, guys. Bye. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share. Bye.